Good afternoon. Good afternoon from Pinhole Quilting. I'm Liz. My husband Pete is behind the camera and we're filming this today on Facebook Live from our Pinhole Quilting showroom. It's a beautiful space and we've got it all set up for uh, demonstrations, open day events and obviously teaching. So let's just do a little reprise of what's happened uh, this week. Obviously, things were, um, most people were not working on Monday and we had a very different day on Monday, but what, a inc what an incredible day it was. I think most people would agree that we do those sort of things incredibly well and everybody should be so proud of the Queen and what she represented um, for the UK and the Commonwealth. And also what the devotion and, and love of the people um, was towards the Queen, both from the UK and those people who came to visit, especially for it, for the, uh, the funeral of the Queen. It was very mo moving and there were particular moments I'm sure that everybody will have that they'll remember. So we move on now. I know the royal family is still in mourning uh, this week, of course, and it will take as with the loss of somebody so significant and so important in, in their lives, um, but also the lives of, of so many other people around the world. So it was, yes, it was a big, big week here, big week here for us. Um, but we celebrate also, and on Sunday night in our village, uh, we got together with our neighbours on the green and said a prayer and celebrated the work that she had done and the devotion and the service. And for the first time, sang God Save the King. Um, it's a moment I won't forget because actually, you know, for so many years, for those 70 years, she had been the monarch and so many people have never sung God Save the King. Here we go. Now... We're moving on to the very important world of quilting for many of the people who are watching today. So, and on catch up. And what we wanted to do was having spoken to a few of our new customers, particularly those who might have ordered machines just before festival quilts or who are receiving them now, we've got our training days um, in November. But until then, you might feel like you're on your own. So don't forget a couple of things. First of all, if you've got any issues, just need to contact us. Either give us a call, send us an email. Email's good because it's then a record of the fact that you've got an issue and we've got something that we can, can look at. Photos, videos are always very good. Um, but also, we've got um, Long Arm Learning Curve, the Facebook group. If there are things that you aren't so sure about or if you want other people's opinions, it's always a great place. It's for handy quilter owners only. Two groups. The Facebook group that's called Long Arm Learning Curve International is literally that. It's an international group. So if you're a teacher of handy quilter overseas, join it. If you're a user of handy quilter machines overseas, please just join it as well. Handy Quilter UK um, is the Long Arm Learning Curve UK group, um, admin by uh, Linda Jackson, our Handy Quilter ambassador and educator. And Linda does a great job of, of putting some information on there and inspiring people. So hop on there and you can post any comments you've got. Perhaps share with us your Long Arm Learning Curve. So many of us are some point on that curve. Uh, some of us are a little stationary at the moment. And, and it's interesting because there was something I was reading earlier this week about, in fact, it was just last night, the person who's got a handy quilt of Moxie, one of the um, Moxie uh, customers, String and Story, she posted how she had felt after doing blog post after blog post and every month she does like a recap, uh, that she was struggling a little bit with her motivation on her quilting. And I think it's completely normal to have the highs and lows of quilting. And I, I remember when Laurie Tigner, um, handy quilter ambassador, who came to visit us, um, I'm a friend on Facebook. And, you know, from time to time, Laurie will just say, I'm not into quilting right now. And she's done these amazing painted mandalas. And it, it's completely normal that we have those moments. And if you are in one of those moments, then don't worry. You will get your quilting mojo back. 
sometimes what it needs is something inspirational and somebody to post something either on Instagram or Pinterest or on Facebook to kind of make you think, oh yeah, I'll dig that out again. And, you know, I've been through th those moments too, as you can imagine, you know, over a period of, gosh, let me think um, how many years I have been doing this for 32 years. And that's quite a long time. And from time to time, my quilting mojo has gone, but obviously I'm in the industry, so I just keep, keep on going, but maybe don't do so much on my own projects. So I'm just saying, if you're in that position, do not worry, do not fret. And if you've just got your machine, I'm sure you're not in that position because you'll be inspired, but possibly daunted. And that's what we're there for and Facebook is there for. So don't feel like you're on your own. You are never on your own when you've got a handy quilter long arm. There are so many people with handy quilters both in the UK and abroad that you can tap into, get inspiration from, find someone that is your muse. Um, the idea of a muse, someone that inspires you in the creative arts. And I think that's a really important thing. We're not all gonna love a particular style. We're not all gonna love to do wall hangings. We're, some of us want to just do edge to edge and we love traditional quilts. And that's all we wanna do and that's great because the lovely thing about quilting is that we've got those creative outlets in so many different ways. Perhaps you love painting on fabric, perhaps you don't, and that's okay. There's something for everybody, there really is. Pete, do you wanna add anything to that or make any comments? Because I've just been um, doing a monologue so no, far. but we can say hello to a few people here. First yep. person online is Carol from County Durham, who very Aww. kindly helped us out at the Harrogate show last weekend. And yes. With, uh, usual fabulous job with the Moxie and Pro Stitcher Lite. And we're looking forward to seeing you later this uh, in October. Indeed, Jackie Poulter. Jan, oh, you Jackie. featured Jackie's, bit of Jackie's whole cloth quilting, haven't you, on one I of have. the posts? So you didn't mention that it was Jackie's, I don't I have put it in the description. Oh, have you? Okay. I changed the header and it's now Jackie's quilt from uh, the whole cloth quilting course that Linda Jackson did uh, last year. And Jackie did an amazing job of it, uh, on it. With an Avanti, she's just upgraded to the studio frame, uh, studio two frame, and she's also added Pro Stitcher to her Avanti. So I did that, what, two or three weeks ago? Um, probably yes. a couple of weeks ago. Yes. So I hope you're getting on well with it, Jackie. And we need to schedule something, some teaching. So Carol, just going back to Carol for a moment, this is Carol's red quilt over here. I think oh, you've seen it before, but we featured this at Harrogate, which was much admired. This is done free motion quilting on Carol's Moxie, just rulers, whole cloth, and free motion, which is amazing. It really is. I think one of the things that was apparent when... Um, I mean, Car Carol did a great job at Festival of Quilts, as Pete said, as well as at Harrogate, and... Carol brought down a dream big that's on the wall behind us as well. Oh, it's behind that poster. That's, oh, that's Carol's. Isn't it? That's Carol's as well. And that's a really beautiful job. This is all done free motion, free hand, <clears throat> free hand guided on the Moxie. And I think what it demonstrates is, you know, the, the Moxie is what, what we've kind of called an, or Handy Quilter have called a, their, you know, someone's first long arm. Now, Carol is, um, you know, an experienced quilter, uh, but hadn't had a long arm before. And what is amazing is how quickly Carol has taken on all of the learning on the Moxie. But one of the reasons for that is that she came down, she did a foundation workshop with us, and she's also taken uh, the workshop with, um, she did it with Linda Jackson as well. So I think one of the things, the takeaway for people like Jackie and for Carol and for many of our other customers who are coming to Tillens workshops, which have been rescheduled, by the way, I'll talk about that in a bit, um, that it's that investment in time and the education, and it does take you to the next level, and that's what we can offer here. Uh, that element of being inspired, but actually having hands-on here, I think is something that everybody who's come and has felt that sort of the camaraderie as well of those people who've been here together and perhaps gone out for dinner together and got to know each other more. It's another level um, of your learning. And there's something about meeting other people and being inspired in this group uh, that we can offer here. It's all good stuff. 
So, Carol, you will be pleased to hear that one of the people you spoke to at Harrogate last week has just ordered <laughs> Moxie with Pro Stitcher today. Yes. There we are. Yes, fantastic. And uh, that inspiration of, and be able to meet a customer, Pete, isn't that right? You know? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's something that we'd done before at other quilt shows. In the past, we've had some of our customers uh, demonstrating, but even more than ever, we had more customers demonstrating on our stand at Festival of Quilts. We had a nice big stand at Festival, but it meant that we could concentrate our education and training with Linda and Abigail, but that we would then have on the stand more people who were customers. And there's no, there's no substitute for having someone who, who, you know, if you can talk to me and Pete as much as you like, and obviously we're always going to say Handy Quilt is fantastic, but... I mean, we would be honest too. If you asked us a, a question and, and we, you know, there was a, a different answer, we be, would be honest with you. But I think there's something completely different when somebody else has been the same situation as you and they're evaluating where you are. They did that maybe a year or so earlier. So that's the difference and that's what we can offer. And um, we don't guide people on what to say to other customers, do we, Pete? Not and at all. It's, um, all we say is just get people to have a go on the machine and chat to them. That's as much as we need everybody to do because um, it's only by trying those machines that you really find out if you're going to love it or not. <clears throat> so let's say hello to a few other people. Yeah. We've also Diane Bell. Hello from Greece. Oh, yeah. You're still out in Greece. If you're lucky. I hope thing. you're having a good holiday, Diane. Oh, wow. There's Mari from Darwin in Australia. Yeah. Amazing how you join us every week, Mari. Yeah. Hi, Mari. Jean Twycross, hi Jean. Yes, hi, oh, yeah, I'm going to mention you, I'm not going to mention your, you by name, of course, but I might be mentioning you later, Jean. As we discussed, you were happy with that. Lindsay Winterton. Oh, Lindsay. Oh, I'm sorry that you won't be able to join us. Trisha. Trisha. Trisha, who says, so true about what you were saying about Linda and Pinhole offering advice, but also inspiring us to move on. Good. Raymond from London. Hi, Raymond. Oh, yeah. Hi, Raymond. And uh, Caroline Griffin Woods, who's recently got her Moxie. Yes. She's definitely daunted, but Moxie's working a treat today. Good, 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 good. We've got Barbara Berg, Christine Hillier, Mary Easy, Karen Vipond, Julia Crosswaite. Wow. Maggie Harris from Swindon. I'm not sure we know you, Maggie, do we? But glad that you are joining us today. Yeah. Hi, Maggie. Jill Pannell. Jill Pannell. Who has said. Oh, yeah. Caroline Handlebars. and I have been just chatting this week, and you should also add to your list that you meet great friends too. There you go. So they met at the Quilts for Care Leavers, right? So when we did our two-day quilting extravaganza and quilted nearly 70 quilts, uh, Jill and Carolyn met. So that was lovely. <clears throat> and they just got on like a house on fire. Oh, my goodness. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I just I love that. I love when people meet each other through the training. Equally, um, people like Sheena and Jacqueline, you know, um, and they, you know, they, I, th I think it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. We never know who we're going to meet. I mean, I met Di many years ago on a Christine Porter um, workshop, didn't I, Di? So, gosh, I can't believe you're well, in Greece. Do you know, it's getting cold yeah, here. You're going to have a horrible shock to the system when you come back. So Di says she's by the pool with a gin and tonic because it's already <laughs> five o'clock there. There we are. Why not? Yeah. And, oh, uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. James few Buffet. Few people finally. Georgie Hodgson, Hodgson is very wet in East Grinstead. Sorry to hear Are that. Are you very Georgie. wet, Georgie? And we've also got Pam online. So, yeah, Pam. Pa Pam, I didn't know your surname was Skuse, which is a very, oh. very much a name that I know from where I'm from down in South Gloucestershire. That's and it. I know that's your part of the world too. Pam Skuse is Natalie Dyer's mum. No way. Yes. Didn't She's know your excuse. surname, Pam. But it was good to see you recently at uh, Natalie's event. It was event. lovely. Oh, Pam, that's amazing. So we've so, even got customers, mothers, yes. tuning in today. How oh, I that? love Pam. <laughs> Natalie, I love your mum. Right. Um, yeah, we've got some lovely mothers, actually. And in fact, I will just mention that Jenny, um, Steve and Jenny popped in yesterday um, in the afternoon. And um, I'd just like to say, yeah, best wishes, Jenny, to your mum who's absolutely lovely and a real inspiration. Um, still quilting um, at the age of 80 something. And in fact, I posted a picture of Jenny that her dad had taken where she's a, like a baby with a Singer sewing machine. So we're talking about people who've really, you know, embedded in that sort of the sewing tradition. And um, I know that Jenny's finishing loads of quilts for her mum on her Amara. And um, yeah, all the best to you guys. Right. 
Now, we're going to talk about some basics because, um, and we're going to talk about machines. So, two machines that I'm front of, in front of here. I thought I'd do some stuff on the sit downs this morning. This morning, this afternoon, even. When I picked up the phone to Jean, I said, Good afternoon. It was 10 o'clock. So, I'm completely about face. This is a Capri. This Capri has a very few stitches on the clock, but it's a, a pre loved machine. Um, it was upgraded to, um, the customer upgraded her machine um, to a stand-up. She made some space for a stand-up, and so she was um, able to sell this on. Well, she wants to sell it on, I beg your pardon. And so we've only got um, less than 200,000 stitches on the clock. It was a, a fairly um, short time that she had it, but it's got the benefit of the remaining warranty. Um, and it's a lovely machine, absolutely fantastic. This is a stitch regulated Capri 18 inch stroke space machine with the inside table and an extra side table. We've got all the bits and pieces that come with it. In fact, we've even got some sweet spots. So the sweet spots enable us to move the quilt nice and easily. Now I've put this quilt right next to here. Let me just take this up. Okay, gonna work if I don't move that away from here. Now, even with the inside table, because it's big, it's nice and big. I've got a very low chair here. Uh, it's nice and big, but you still need to stack it up. You need to think about how you manipulate your quilt and where you're quilting and how you're doing it when you've got a big quilt. So I've deliberately got an enormous piece of fabric here. It's huge. It's quite warm in the showroom, so I'm not going to throw it over my left arm or anything, but I have quilted like that before now taking the weight over here or on a ironing board if I need more to the, capture the weight. It's the weight that creates the problem for you. But 18 inches of throat space from the needle to the back of the machine here, this upright defines throat space. 18 inches on this machine. The Capri came out just as COVID hit. So it was, didn't have a big launch. And so the first show that we took it to, I think it was more than last year, wasn't it, Pete? Just in the autumn show. I think it was, yes. We hadn't actually been able to demonstrate it to many people. So it's not something that you'll necessarily have seen a big fanfare about, only because of the timing of it. But it's an absolutely superb machine. It's stitch regulated. So when we go to the home screen, we can select what type of stitch regulation. And on this one, you've got the choice of things in stitches per minute and also inches, stitches per inch. So we can go from anything on stitches per inch um, from four and go into basting stitch down to four inches all the way up to 22. So a massive range of stitch lengths that you can select and we can have it in manual, but why would you have that? Because you've got the insight table. So you're probably going to choose stitch regulation, either in precision, which literally it stops when you stop, or in a cruise or continuous setting, which means that it keeps sewing even when you pause. It's a concept that until you've had a go with it, or until I show you, you probably won't make a lot of sense. But I'm going to give you a demonstration. So what I would do is um, I'm going to say I'm a shover, not a roller. So what I mean by that is if you if you do this and roll all this up, that actually creates a lot of weight on the table that you've then got to move around. If you just let it concertina and shove it, it's a lot, in my experience, I'm going to put a caveat on that, in my experience, this is a better way to go than it is if you roll it, which creates the weight. We've got the side table. You don't normally have a notepad and other bits and pieces on here. So I'm just going to move these temporarily. Let's put these to one side. That's what I'm here for. That's what he's, Pete's here for. Too late. But you didn't delegate. <laughs> I didn't delegate it to Pete. Actually, can I have my scissors, please? Thank you. Right. So we have got our sweet spots. And the Trish settings. has lost video. Everybody else okay? Just confirm somebody, please. Ooh. Seems all right this end. Okay, I shall keep going regardless. So the magic eyes, two magic eyes underneath here in the set into the table. One and two. Stitch plate, no feed dogs, completely smooth, lovely smooth surface. What we want to do is avoid having the quilt drop down here, okay? Thank you, everybody seems fine. Oh, Tricia, it's just yourself. 
Hope you're back. So what you don't want to do is quilt it this way around. You really, you really don't want to do that well, if winter, you can avoid maybe. it. Yeah, but if you're in the if it's halfway, obviously there's not a lot you can do. But what you want to do as much as possible is stop it coming down the front here. Debbie Brown, Andy Wilder educator, what she does is have a laminate cushion under here that's nice and smooth, and then that bridges the gap between the table and you. Good idea. Very good idea. Anyway, as you can see, I'm on the edge, so I certainly would not have it that way around. I would definitely have it that way around, and I would get myself a nice flat area and use my sweet spot. Setting is 12 stitches per inch on continuous. And at the moment, I've got it on 100. I'm going to play with that setting for how fast it sews when I pause, put my foot on the foot pedal, and it will sew slowly at the 100. And then when I move it, it will stitch at 12 stitches per inch. There we go. So you can slow right down. And I'm just going to come here. When you need to reassess, you can just move it. Take your foot off the foot pedal and then put your foot on the foot pedal again and then away you go. I'm just going to echo. There's also a play function so you don't have to use the foot pedal. Oh yeah. If so I can press play on here and it'll just play at so that speed. This isn't using the foot pedal at all. My foot is completely off. Just a question of moving the fabric. So you can get a nice slow speed if you wish. But the nice thing is if I move much faster, it will keep up with it. And when I want to finish, just press pause on the screen. So this is the Capri. It's available on our prelovelongarms.co.uk website. And you can come for a demonstration here at the showroom. It's priced below the price of a brand new Sweet 16. And yet it's only got just under 200,000 stitches on the clock. It's a bargain, absolute bargain. So if you're looking for a small footprint, with the, the side table dropped, it's about a meter square. You can fit it into any sewing room, even a box room. It would fit. And it's got the optional wheels, um, the casters, which are locking casters. Other things it's got, as I say, includes these sweet spots, which are awesome. And it's a, what can I say? It's a beautiful machine. I absolutely love this. I mean, that's so easy to quilt. Uh, let me just show you. In manual mode, you'd select the number of stitches that you want to stitch. There's a couple of presets, but it's all, I'm going to say, it's all about you. It's all about you, what the stitch length is. So if I sew very, very slowly, I move, I move very, very slowly, I get lots of tiny stitches. And if I move faster, the faster I go, the bigger the stitch. So manual's just like doing your normal domestic. So it really is up to you how fast um, you go, you can set it to a faster speed. So maybe I'll go up to, that was at 550. Let's go up to say 1200. Oh, this is a really fast machine, by the way. I'll, I'll show you how quick you can go. My default design. And let's just go all the way up. 2200, right. Are you ready? It's hard for me to keep up with that. So it's a really fast machine. So it's a meaty beast. Don't forget, all handy quilters are semi-industrial machines. They use industrial needles, so you can go at great speeds without any problem with the stitch quality. Absolutely, 2,200 stitches per minute. How about that? So to finish off, um, and I'm going to show you the tensioning. Oh, let me just point out one difference between this machine and the one to my left. 
is on this machine, can we just show the, uh, the tension dial, Pete? Because I'm going to go on to tensioning in a second. And in fact, there, there was a reason why I pick, picked this machine and the one next to me. Let's see if I can get it at an angle that's visible. Yep. This number here with the sort of, it, it actually is like a little uh, motif for what the tension discs look like with thread so running between 120. And the black knob on the right hand side of the machine, if you go lefty loosey right on righty tighty, so I'm going to go lefty loosey, the number will decrease. So I've turned it approximately half a turn there. It's gone from 220 to 180. So I can make a note that for this thread and with the bobbin thread that I've got in the bobbin currently, that my tension was at 220. I'd also make a note of how many of these pre-tensioners holes I've put this, this thread through. So at the moment I've got glide thread. Okay, so that's a little bit on the tension. How about finishing off the stitches? Now this is the same technique as we do on the stand-up machines. I would do a few stitches to go back on myself. These are pretty tiny stitches anyway, but let's just do that. And then I bring the, th the needle to the up position. I bring some extra thread off the cone. Don't disturb the stitches here by pulling on those stitches, okay? Now this loop, we need this loop to be over here. So on the stand-ups, you just move it away, come back and take up the slack with your left hand. On the sit-down, we can just change over our hands like that. So I've now got a loop in my left hand and then I do uh, one final needle down, and needle up. That brings up the bobbin thread and I can either cut it level if it's a utility quilt and I'm not not fussed about tying the stitches in that's fine or I can bring up that bobbin thread and I just find whichever end of it is coming off the bobbin which in this case is this one that's just coming from that side. I can make it really long if I want. Cut it halfway through, cut that top thread as well. And now I've got a top thread there ready to go for the next time I want to start stitching. Here I've got two ends of a bobbin thread and a top thread. I think I should have used a different colour that you could see. You might not be able to see this, but I'm going to tell you there's a grey that's got two you strands. Can see that. You can see that, okay. One of these, if I now move the quilt away, watch what happens. One of them's just going to disappear. There we go. And I'm left with the two ends the that I can in. tie in. That end of the bobbin thread, which is under here, is now the distance of how far it was from where I did that process, plus I cut it halfway through the loop. That's why it's that long. So it's double the distance. Yeah. So that's ready to go for your next pick it is. stitch. It is. Say I wanted to change thread. And say I was changing to the same type of thread. I just want to show you the quick way that we have that we can just bring that thread through. So here's glide thread. I'll just get another glide actually. No, I don't want to use that one. Actually, I meant to, I was going to use that for something else. Right, here's another glide thread, a purple one. And if I just cut that back here, Take that one off. It's the same thread, so I'm going to go through the same number of pretensioner holes, which in this case for glide, what I do is I use uh, the top and the bottom, and I... What else was I going to say? Oh yeah, I use a 16 needle. Let's put the new thread on here at the back, get the two thread ends together. So I've got a purple and a gold. Put those two threads together, just tie a little knot to hold them together, like so. So I've got a little knot. There we go. Simple knot. Now, when I pull it through, I can unthread it from the needle and the hole above the needle and just pull from just below the what we call the piggy tail. But as I pull on it, I'm just going to guide this bit. You should be able to see it here. It's going to go knot. through the pretensioners. When it gets as far as here, I ease these tension discs apart so that that knot has a fighting chance of making it all the way to here. Second reason for doing that, if you do that, it will have more success in terms of getting within the tension discs and doing without us having to physically floss up, which is what we would have done the first time we threaded this. 
the fact that you've done that and it's gone right in there, it really does make a difference. I know quite a few people who didn't realize they could do that and haven't been putting their fingers in between, the fingernails in between those tension discs and have said that that made the difference. So then you can cut it off just above where the knot was so that we can get it through the final two stages. So that's going to save you a lot of time. Now I do know there are a few people who have confessed and under no intimidation or fear of retribution, they have confessed that they have uh, actually never threaded their machine up from scratch. They've literally said, well, after you did the training, I, I just pulled it through every time, which is fine unless you need to completely rethread it and then you haven't got a clue. So you can always watch this video back. So this applies to all handy quarter machines. You can yep. pull the thread through on all of them in that way. You can. There's a little guide just above the needle. So we put it through that little guide, like so. Okay, and then just trim that end off so that it's a nice end before. Just taking it down the groove of the needle and it'll pop in like that. So I don't even have to see really, as long as I get it in that groove, that end in the groove, it will just go down and feed in. The reason being that's what the thread is designed to do. That's what the, the groove is there to do. And because it's okay. an industrial needle, it's actually easier to thread than a standard domestic needle. Liz, before you move on, I'm going to just drop something on you here because I spotted an email that was in just before we came live on air. Somebody talking about having put the bobbin in the bobbin case the wrong way around. So what they've done is to put the bobbin case on top of the bobbin thread. Is this the person the that I was speaking around. about earlier? I wasn't going to mention any names. Well, I've discussed it with her and she's fine if we mention names. Oh, have names. you? So, Jean. <laughs> it's Jean, you're not the only person. So it's worth, it's worth reiterating this, particularly those people, I was going for to come instance, on to that. who have yeah. moxes or other machines where we don't come and do the training on site. That's true. This is something just worth checking. It is. Most of the time, I've got a plastic bobbin in here, okay? And most of the time we use the plastic bobbins for demonstrations, everything else like that. With all of our machines, with the handicapped machines, you get six bobbins. Uh, so you can wind your own, which is great. The bobbin case, the most recent ones have got a little spring in it. They've changed, I think we've got three or four different types now, haven't yes. we? Yes. They have increased the number of types recently. Uh, it's got a little backlash spring in. That might be too close. Yeah, that's fine. The backlash spring is designed to stop overspinning of the bobbin. I mean, you know, if I'm going 2,200 stitches per minute and I suddenly stop, as I did, it has the potential for that bobbin to keep rotating. So the bobbin case spring that's in there, the backlash spring, you should never take that out. If it comes out unintentionally, we have a YouTube video, lovely video that Pete put together that tells you how to put it back in. He explains it very clearly. Yeah, the, the backlash spring, it's worth just sort of reiterating that. If, if you're doing 2,200 stitches per minute, the bobbin is turning at twice that speed. So the bobbin is rotating at 4,400 stitches per minute, which is over 70 times a second. So if... What? Yes. So if you stop suddenly, the tendency is for that bobbin to keep spinning and then it throws the thread off the bobbin and gets caught up in the bobbin case. And the purpose of the backlash spring is to bring the bobbin to a halt when you stop, when you stop as well. Now I know some people uh, say that uh, you can take the backlash spring out and you can and you, it might work fine. Mm -hmm. But as I say to people, no engineer would have designed a complicated piece of braking mechanism in the bobbin case if it wasn't really necessary. Quite. Really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. It does two rotations for every stitch. For every stitch, the bobbin <sighs> turns twice. So on the infinity, that's 6,200 at full speed. So the bobbin that's is rotating at more than 100 times a second on the infinity if you're going at full speed. Wow. And I, I like to test them at full speed. That's, that's amazing. It's incredible that it stitches like that. Okay. So here's that bobbin case. Beautifully made piece of equipment. Essential. You can't say without them. So sometimes people have a problem with their bobbin case, and that's where we say, 
oh, it would be useful to have a second one. I do recommend that if you're going to get any extras, a second bobbin case is a good investment. It can happen that something happens to your bobbin case, like you drop it on the floor. Um, you don't want to drop it on a hard floor. Not a good idea. It can get distorted. Or we have known people to unscrew the wrong screw and the whole spring comes off and they can't get it back on again. It's quite tricky. So just a couple of reasons why you might want to do that. Third reason would be that if you keep one that you don't fiddle around with too much and you have another one that you use perhaps for really interesting threads, like for example, in my little bobbin box here, I have got various threads and one of them is a hand wound Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle. So if I was using hand wound Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle in my bobbin case, I probably wouldn't want to use Glide next without adjusting it a considerable amount. So why not keep one bobbin case for your fancy threads and adjusting and one for the sort of normal stuff. So this, um, this bobbin is the same as these metal ones, but I think it will show up better if I demonstrate with a metal bobbin with a bright green thread. How about that? If I can get it out. Here we go. Ah, right, excellent. You can see that, I think. Nice lime green, excellent. Beautiful. This has a slot in it, okay? And the way I normally demonstrate how to put a bobbin in a bobbin case is to say it comes off clockwise, like so. Okay, so that's the bobbin and that's the thread coming off like this. Some people talk about Q and P, so this would be a Q. Q. If it was the other way around, it would be P. Make sense? Hopefully. It should be a Q. Should be a Q. So it's coming off clockwise. A lot of top loading machines are the other way around. So that's why you might easily get confused. If you hold the bobbin case in your left hand, whether you're right or left handed, um, I'm going to demonstrate first as though you're right handed. OK, there's a little slot where the thread goes through and the spring. Have that at the 12 o'clock position. Put your bobbin in the bobbin case and then let that bobbin thread just come up through the slot and underneath the spring. I've done it slowly, but, but you know, after you've done it hundreds of times, you do that really quickly. If I now watch this, you'll see that the bobbin is rotating clockwise. Which is correct. That's yep. what you want to see. So that's always a good test, particularly when you're new. Once you've loaded your bobbin in your bobbin case, just pull that bobbin thread and check that the bobbin case is turning clockwise. I've never loaded it the wrong way around and seen what happens to that slot, have you? Yes. Pete's done that. I'm just going to show you. Can I show them? Or is that going to confuse them? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just explain the, why yeah. this customer got it the wrong way around. She has owned up online, actually. Jean, you didn't need to do that. She said she was okay with it. Okay, so what she was doing was holding the thread clockwise and then putting the bobbin case over the top, like that. Rather than putting the bobbin case, the bobbin into the bobbin case. So now, All right. so now if you pull the thread, Jean, look, it's going anti-clockwise. Incorrect. I think, Jean, that is a genius thing that you've done there that you have actually told me something today that I did not know. Did really? You? Yes, I knew it because I've had one or two other customers who uh -huh. have done the same thing, Jean. You're not alone. Pete hadn't shared this with me. He probably thought I, did. I knew. You just forgotten. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's very possible. <laughs> Pete tells me things that I kind of think, I don't remember that. And I know that your memory is not great. So even if I, what I'm saying is untrue, you would never know. I know. What's surprising is I can remember people, but I can't remember things like that that you've told me. Ah. You'd think I would remember technical stuff. Karen Vipond in, on Anglesey says, Q is for quilting and P is for patchwork on the domestic. Wow. Now, Judy, <laughs> whose machine this is, teaches people. And she has things like that that are brilliant from remembering. And Karen, I just think that is, that is a brilliant thing. Q is for quilting, P is for pitting, or patchwork. Fabulous. You see, this is what happens when we do Facebook Live. We get some really good interaction with our customers and we learn, we learn things. We learn stuff, right? We learn stuff. So 
I've got my green thread. Oh, I could put that on there and you'll be able to see because I'm going to do tension next. <clears throat> I'm going to I'll use that bobbin in that one. Um, now, something else came up. When you get one of our handy quilter machines, you get some samples of bobbins. You get some samples of thread. You will have these two bobbins that you can test out and play with. One has got cardboard sides and one has got plastic sides. Okay. Now, this came about, again, because of a customer giving us information about something they didn't, didn't know what it was for, um, which is fair enough. And it's something that's our omission is that we haven't told you what these are for. Okay. We do apologize about that. But the customer who pointed it out to me, um, she said, how do I use these? Good question. Something we teach on our foundation workshop, but unfortunately she's up in Scotland. So it won't be very easy for her to come to the foundation workshop. This has cardboard sides. It's a superior thread super bob. It's got 60 weight bottom line thread on it. You can use bottom line on the top. You buy it on a cone. Um, but actually this is pre-wound onto a bobbin, an M size bobbin in a beautiful purple color. It's not always purple. Um, if you want to use it, you can take the side off and put it into the bobbin case. Oop, I've taken the right one off. That'd be ironic, wouldn't it? Whew. I took the right side off. No, I didn't. I took the wrong side off. Anyway, you can take both sides off. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can take both sides of the cardboard that's off lucky. and the thread still stays in place. So that's perfectly fine. Yeah. So that you're left just with the core. I find that that cardboard can get a bit mashed. So I prefer to take both sides off anyway. And then you can put it into your bobbin case. I'll, I'll demonstrate again. So holding the bobbin in your right hand, it's coming off Q, Q for quilting. <laughs> Brilliant. Slot at the top with the spring on it, the outer spring, through the slot and under the spring. And then do your bobbin drop test. And check. Check. First of all, which way your bobbin's turning? Oh, yes. But when I see, oh, you can see. It's you can rotate. You see. Not easy to see. Uh, not without yeah, a you slot. Can you can see. It. You can see. Just I can see. It. Yeah. I can I see. As a, a good, user, I mean, I could see. I think there's a good check that we can do when we're teaching people. To I think look it's brilliant. And check for that clockwise rotation. You see, we're all on our long arm learning curve. And I've, I've learned something today that um, I'd forgotten Peter told me. So. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. You know, you could say you told me and I believe you. Right. Trust me. I know. You yeah. can trust me. Yeah. Now, when we do our bobbin drop test, mm. you can, don't do this on the hard floor. Do it over your quilt or over the bed or over the sofa or whatever. But what we're doing is we're playing the bobbin case in our hand like so and then bringing the bobbin upright. It should be possible to bring it upright and then you're just dropping your hand away and it should float down much easier, a little bit easier than that. So what we're looking for is a really smooth, like that, nice and smooth. Okay, that is a good bobbin drop test. It shouldn't go without any tension at all. You should feel a little bit of resistance. If you haven't, it's small increments that we change it. So that is literally like, if I was thinking about a clock face, it might be one or two minutes of a clock face. If I make, move that by five minutes of a clock face, and I'll show you what that does. It's very slow. So too that's tight. too tight. And if I move it back by, I'm going to move it back. I'll tell you how much I've done it. Two minutes. Still a bit slow. Yep. Another two but yes, minutes. This is a very fine adjustment on the bobbin yeah. case. It's not like the top tension. That's nice. And there will be a margin, so I'm back to within a minute of where I started. So what I'm saying is there is a margin of where it will work nicely, but it will be a small margin of maybe two, three, four minutes for most threads. So Would do, you agree? Do that check every time you change the bobbin. Yes. And do that check always with a full bobbin. Even if you're using the same thread that you used before, just double check it each time. It'll become second nature. Yeah, it's a really good point about the full bobbin. The weight of the thread on that bobbin, which is nearly empty, versus that bobbin makes a difference. Maybe you'd just like to show 
what difference yeah, it makes okay. just by putting those two yeah, yeah. in that bobbin case. Okay, so I'm going to do the full one first. The other thing to mention, which we um, did email about, I hope there's an end on this. So Jan, who uh, said a, hmm. that he liked my video on the backlash spring, has also said, do you recommend the tower gauge for this? My, right. I th Listen, we have some customers who use the tower gauge for judging this. My yeah. view is that it is. Let me just get a different one. I can't see the end. In the UK, it's £120 that you can spend on fabric or something else much more exciting because, in my view, it's completely um, unnecessary. If you learn the drop test, it is absolutely fine and you, you certainly don't need a tower gauge to be able to get the right tension. But that's personal opinion, and I know some people swear by their tower gauges. Um, but as I say, spend your money on something else. Just knocked my thing off. Right, I was just struggling to find the end of that one. So I've just got another one out. But what I was going to say was when uh, the customer in Scotland asked us about the bobbins that she got with her Moxie, this Deco Bob bobbin tends to be a little overwound. So what we do is we take off 15 arm's lengths of thread so that it doesn't just fall off. Because what can happen if it's overwound, it will jam in the bobbin case, potentially wrap around that backlash spring and cause you some tension issues and end up with a bird's nest. Um, it might work for perhaps a meter of sewing and then suddenly you'll have a problem. So we recommend, and we do put this on the website um, when you purchase a wonderful Deco Bob. So I've already done that on this one. So putting this one in, it's a cue. It goes in like this, and let's just see. This might be a little bit looser because this is finer thread. So that's okay. I'm just not going to adjust fine. it. Yeah, I'll just do it like that. Okay. Let me just do that again. Right, it's hanging up a bit. Okay. So that. That seemed. A bit tight. It did. I'm just. I'm going to adjust it to this one to the perfect amount. Yeah, that would be the best thing to do, wouldn't it? So lefty Lucy, I've I've loosened it off, and that's now running really smoothly. Just going to. I'm probably doing it slightly too much there. Right, somewhere in between those two points. That's nice. It's got a bit of tension, but it runs really smooth. And now, well, we should also mention about the fluff, shouldn't we? We okay? Oh, we've been on for ages, Pete. You've been talking and talking. I know. This is what we do on the foundation course, isn't it? A lot of this stuff. Uh, but it's good. Mm. It's good because you know people, if they don't come on the foundation, can find this out. Right. This is the nearly empty one. Look at that. Look at that. Completely <laughs> free running because yeah. the weight of the thread is having an impact on the bobbin tension. So no, it should be the other way around. No. No. Okay. Think back to your O level physics. But that was the that was the full one. Shouldn't that be heavier? If you, okay, that's, well that's right. Okay. Well let me just try that again. But what I was gonna say was if we these are different colours. I was gonna mention about different colours. We can't assume that this will run the same as the pink. No. Either. We can't. Think of so oh. you've got some further. You've got more weight on the outside of the oh, bobbin, yeah, yeah, yeah. and therefore it's slowing it down. Think. I'll tell you what. Think of your ice skater who's spinning on the spot. Yes. What happens when they pull their arms in and reduce the outer weight? They speed up. They do. God, yeah. I didn't think about it that way around. There we are. God, so how much am I learning today? <laughs> so, my I'm yes. glad Pete's here. <laughs> Mari's asked whether you can get plastic end bobbins for the Moxie. Yes, you can. This is uh, what we use all the time in all our machines, including the Moxie. We use these, which are uh, Wonderful Deco Bob. I don't know if that's available easily to you in Australia. Yes, yeah, it will be. So yeah. it should be, I'm sure. No, what just happened, Pete? I just knocked the, the backlash bobbin. spring came out. Yeah. Can I refer you <gasps> to my YouTube video? Type in on the Pinhole Quilting YouTube page. How to refit my backlash spring. Yeah, because I, I pulled it out and it broke. It, it, I got wrapped around when I tried to get it out. So that is right. And I have got that back in beautifully. 
So that's back in now. That's how hard it is. Not hard at all. Don't panic. Do not panic. Right, I'm going to mention this one now. Have you got the details? This one, not on the website yet. So the Capri is on freelodlongarms.co.uk. This one is a custom machine. Yeah. That has been approved for sale, but it's not yet on the website. No. So you are getting the first opportunity to see it. Yeah. I will get this one. There we go. So these things can go on the front and they just provide a nice bit of... You can put double-sided tape on instead, but I don't like messing up the table. Jan, I'm, I'm glad that you, my video was helpful when your bob and backlash spring fell out. It does happen from time to time, so you do need to know how to put it back in correctly. I do service machines on a fairly regular basis where, when I look at the bobbing case, the spring's in the wrong way around, so it's not working correctly and will probably be giving inconsistent tension problems. Right. I've also got 50 million things on my quilt now. Okay, that's got wrapped around, 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 around the needle. So Rosemary's happy that you're still talking, Liz, because she was unable to join us before 3.30. Okay. <laughs> and even more so, because what we're talking about is exactly what she wanted to know. Oh! How about that? That's even better. Even better. <laughs> okay, on the Sweet 16, which is a fantastic sit-down long arm that has been around ever since we started doing the, um, the long arms. Um, so that's 2010. Um, it's a great machine. It's a real work workhorse, 1800 stitches per minute. And this Sweet 16 is one of the original ones, isn't it? It one is. The original ones. It's 2013, I think. Yes. I think. And I was about to sew this information into the back of this quilt. Fortunately, I've retrieved it. So this Free Love Sweet 16, um, which is not yet on the website, it's um, a 2010. That's 2010. Yeah. Original Sweet 16, that's okay. what it says here. Uh, it it's is. a fine example, this is piece wording, of this iconic and popular machine. Has a very low stitch count, less than a million stitches, and is in excellent condition, having just been serviced by us. I can concur with that. It so sounds beautiful. Um, it's a private sale between the buyer and um, the seller, same as on the Capri. So, but you can test drive it here mainly because the, the customer lives in, um, in Wales, so it's a little bit of a distance for people to go. You would, if you decide to go ahead with this machine, you'd get the free foundation training workshop. It comes with the... Um, the original table. Original, yeah, the original table, not the Insight table. And this hasn't been upgraded. It's quite an old model, so it hasn't been upgraded to work with True Stitch. So if you're looking for a real bargain of a Sweet 16 that has been serviced, is sewing beautifully, and is low mileage. Without stitch regulation. Without stitch regulation, then this would be a fabulous machine to get. And the price get. is? Price is 2,250 pounds. Okay, so needle down, needle up, bring up that thread. Do your tie off stitches by doing needle down, needle up a few times. <coughs> And it's got the foot pedal here, and I'm just going to set it to a maximum speed of, say, 28%. I'm going to borrow these sweet spots and just start So, tell stitching. people in your quilt groups, we often have pre-loved machines available. This one's just available, as Liz has said. And often they are sold before we even list them. Um, I noticed that Cheryl was online today and Cheryl bought a pre-loved Avanti that we have just prepared for sale. She happened to come for a demo that day and it was sold to her before we listed it. There's another Avanti that I'm installing next week, pre-loved, that similarly never got onto the website because someone else came for a demo and tried it out and loved it. So if you're interested in a second user machine, just email us because then we'll tell you if a new one becomes available that you might be interested in. Okay, it's me that's been talking a lot now and Liz has been doing some lovely feathers here, look. Here we go. And I'm going to go a little bit faster. It's only 40% of the speed of the machine.
Okay. As you can see, sewing beautifully. Speed it up. I'm going to speed it up now. Right, here we go. What speed is it? 100%. about that very good there we go you ought to make quilts i should do that okay so bringing thread up again actually one final little tip can i show one final tip for sit down people in particular but you can do this on the stand-ups as well we seem mm. to have a little bit of a thread nest here look <laughs> at this wow this is what happens when you look you can make something from that <clears throat> Sulky Sulvy, lay it on and start stitching. Right, let's just show you when you're at a sit down to bring the thread up from underneath. Quick way of doing it, just get rid of that extra bit of thread. I'm hoping with the pink on black you'll see this nice and clearly. Go needle down, needle up, and then hold that side of the thread with your left hand and just sweep underneath. And there we go. A couple of securing stitches. Slightly moving the fabric, and you're ready to stitch. Nice little tip. Yep. So, other things. Oh, I need my pad. Can you pass me my pad, please? Yes. Please? Stop walking around and getting your Can you pass me front. my pad, please? You know, people want to see your face. <laughs> that might be a matter of opinion. <laughs> right. So, we did Jean's nice technique for making sure you've got the bobbin case in the right place and Karen said Q for quilting P for piecing or patchwork so nice little things to remember how to get the bobbin in the bobbin case and what was more amazing was that even though Jean put it in the wrong way around the machine still managed to stitch just saying putting the thread through we covered stopping and starting covered a little bit on backlash spring oh and any fluff under the bobbin case spring you need to get that out with a card not a pin let's talk about a few other things i know i've been talking now for quite a long time but just want to mention Telen jeffrey we have rearranged to a uh, couple of to workshops they're now going to be the one we've got spaces on the third and fourth of november this will be a fantastic course applique doing applique on the long arm direct onto your project with quilting directly at the same time as the applique. Fantastic technique. We'll also be covering couching with very fine threads. I did a similar technique with Claudia File when I was in Houston. Well, Telen's coming over and showing her way of doing this too. And you'll do free motion quilting, just quilt the fabric. It's a single piece of fabric. You take your inspiration from the fabric and you just go for it. And um, Telen's gonna bring over some pieces of fabric that we can do that on. Um, so absolutely brilliant. And then the final half day, this is a two day workshop. The final half day will be, how do I quilt it? You bring along your quilt top, we discuss it. And I can tell you now, I did a, oh gosh, I'm gonna forget her name now. Um, I did a full day class with, remember who it was? Oh yeah, Hollis Chatelaine in Houston on how do I quilt it? And everybody brought along their quilt and it was so useful. Not just really about your own quilt. Seriously, I learned more from other people's quilts and there were award-winning quilters in that audience and they pitched in as to how to quilt each person's quilt. Such a valuable experience. And Talen is extremely experienced. So uh, it's 400 pounds for the two days. It includes your lunch and includes all the materials pretty much that you need. So come along um, uh, if you can make it 3rd and 4th of November, Thursday and Friday, just before bonfire night. On the 19th of November, we've got two sessions uh, with Stuart Hillard, our Handy Quilter Ambassador, Stuart Hillard. He is fantastic, absolutely wonderful. His presentation on how he uses his long arm and uh, showing like a huge number of quilts. It is trunk show uh, times 100. Absolutely brilliant. We had two massive carts full of his quilts that we had to bring in from the car last time. And then after his talk and some questions, you've got the opportunity to have a play on all the machines.
We can show you the latest range, even if you've got a handy quilter and you want to see what the latest machines are, or even some tips and techniques. Maybe you've got some questions about your machine. Come along, enjoy the day, the half day with Stuart. Book either a morning or an afternoon session. It's only £10. And if you spend anything in terms of, well, say you bought a machine, you'd get that £10 back. Or say you even bought just, I don't know, some glide thread, you'd also get it back. The machine would be good though. 8th and 9th of November, um, we've got the foundation workshops. For those people who have purchased a long arm, a uh, handy quilt long arm in the UK, most of the time you will get a free foundation workshop space and you can book it online. You get a code when you get your machine, just type it in, it reduces the cost to zero and you can book it up. 10th of November, Rulers, Feathers and Fills. Um, these will be with myself. Okay. And that's, that's a really good follow-on course for anybody doing the foundation course. It is. So I think that's it for now. Any more questions, Pete, that you want no, to... No, Jenny James says, thank you for the kind words. Her mum is doing a stack and whack at the moment. So oh, wonderful. She will, Jenny will be courting it soon. Loving today's demonstration. Great. For really useful information. Marvellous. Okay, that's lovely. Yes, mind your P's and Q's, Jenny. Yes, mind your P's and Q's. We won't forget that now. Just a wish to have everybody, to everybody to have a wonderful week, have a lovely weekend and happy quilting. See you next week.